Hello. In this film, I want to talk to you about my design for the woodblock print that I'm going to do. So here I have my design drawing, the drawing I'm going to use as my template to cut my blocks. And I wanted to show you how I arrived at this design. So if I go back, oh, probably a couple of years um, to some very bad weather in Cumbria, I was out in the rain um, and I did this this wonderful drawing in uh, Buttermere. It was a very short drawing because Ben had just fallen over into a big puddle and was sopping wet so he wasn't kind of hanging around. So you can see here I've got this very scribbly drawing with some notes. What I did see and what has informed quite a few of my prints was a really beautiful scene where the background was almost invisible in mist and the foreground was terrifically sharp and brightly coloured. So I love that contrast between that kind of misty background and the, the bold foreground. So here I sort of caught it. And even then um, at the roadside, I was thinking how that might make up into a print. And when we got back to our rather grossy travel lodge, I did myself a little pastel drawing here where I developed it using that initial scribble plus some photographs and this is kind of much truer to how the image looks and I've done a couple of lino cuts based around this image so it's an idea I really like and when I was thinking about what to show you for this woodblock series I really wanted you to see a print that was um, beyond the straightforward. When I wrote my book, Making Japanese Woodblock Prints, which um, was very much designed as a step-by-step -step through the process, I was very careful to make it very understandable and straightforward. And as a kind of complement to that, I want these films to show you how I would work and push the boundaries a bit more. So, I thought this would make a good subject for showing how to do these very pale printings, but also to do some uh, work with a, a piece of, of rough wood in it. And so, as I have been trailing, if you've seen any of the trailers for this series, I've been trailing this piece of you. And I initially thought that my piece of you would be great for the foreground. But you do need to be really careful when you use rough wood grain in a print because it, you don't want it to just look like it's plonked there. It's actually got to work in the composition and in the structure of the, of the print. Um, so otherwise, it's a, a pretty pattern. So when I was thinking about this doing the foreground, I very quickly realised that actually this piece of wood, although it's very beautiful, was not going to give me enough um, of a sort of three dimensional feel to a foreground. It was just going to look like a stripe of pattern. So then I thought, well, why not make it do the job of the top of the waterfall? So it's, it's going to barely be there. It'll be very, very subtle, but... It does have this marvellous top piece here. So I thought, right, we'll make it the top of the waterfall. So the next thing I did wasn't drawing, it was printing. And I haven't raised the grain on this yet. So it is at the moment not printing very well. But I went off and let me just grab the right piece of paper. Went off and did some very rudimentary prints. Um, just onto paper so that I had the basic outline of what I was dealing with so that I could do a little bit of fooling around with um, some glue. And I made myself, as you can see, a really rudimentary basis for my design. Now this is actually second generation. The first one I did here, I, I actually stuck the uh, first print down, did my waterfall, and then did this drawing. And then I butchered it because I quite like this drawing down here, but I didn't like the position of where I stuck the, 
the wood grain so you can see it's it's just stuck on here and so this is the next stage so I'm adapting that initial um, sketch in Cumbria to work with the piece of wood so you can see I've moved it over to this side and changed the shape but I've also thinking about the paper I'm going to use at the same time because normally when I work with Japanese woodblock and I will talk more about paper later I use paper that comes on a roll uh, it's the Shiramini roll from Awagami which is a, a lovely paper and I can cut it to any size I want but they also make a lovely soft bamboo, Bamboo Select, which if you watch my Lino Cup films, you'll have seen me using for that. And it's just a lovely soft paper. And I just thought it would be really nice to use that bamboo for this print. It would lend itself to the mist and things. So um, I'm working within the size of that sheet of paper. So I've made sure that my print is the right size so that I can get the paper registering properly which again is something we'll look at later. So here I have the right size for making my print. I've got the shape I like. I know that there's a lot of potential there with the wood grain. So the next stage is to go on to the final design drawing. And here um, I have it. It's on very thin paper because I was using a light box to transfer my initial drawing from the previous example onto here. And if you've been watching the adverts, if, you, if you're if really sharp, you'll spot that the waterfall has changed here as well. Um, you can probably see what a mess I've made. It has taken many routes down the side of this mountain, um, but I finally arrived at what I wanted. And so this is like my starting point for the whole of the print. And this drawing is what I'm going to be using for working out the registration and for working out where blocks are going to sit. So you can see what started out at least two years ago on a very wet hillside in the autumn has now developed into this potentially very delicate misty print um, that I'm going to do for you now. So I hope you found that useful and I hope you'll join me for the next stage when I'm going to be getting this lovely piece of wood ready to do a much better print to show some wood grain.